Hey everyone, this is Nitro. So in this video, I thought I would go over my Apex 15 box of characters and I'll have one third and final video after that to go over some of the other characters I may potentially use in my box in the future, like the backup heroes for example, or other heroes that may become relevant again in my box, like such as potentially Shafiniel when her 3C is released. But in any case, let's go over the Apex 15 characters. And we'll start off with Bozol. So Bozol currently now has a Source of Metal and a Clocks Enchant set. He runs a Miracle Staff with a 4% magic defense increase and some 7% hit points. This Galaxy Cloak is going to be getting replaced very soon. Uh, it gives 13% magic defense and 7% hit points, but it's going to get replaced obviously when his exclusive gets released. And there's a Soul Stiller Headdress at this time with 11% magic defense, 8% hit points, and 10% defense. Finally, the Source of Metal currently gives a flat out 10% magic defense. So overall, you can see my magic defense is quite high on Bozol, and it's enough for him to do what he needs to. Uh, Soldier-wise, I rotate between Crystal Warlocks and Sorceresses for PvP content. And, you know, Sorceress is for maximum single target damage, Crystal Warlocks is for survivability. Although, it doesn't survive against, let's say, ignore soldiers like Zerda. Next up is Landius. My Landius is now already configured for the Season 6 play, so he has already been changed to Lancer class with Blood Pact. Before this, he was running, in, um, he was running the Dragon weapon. Uh, yeah, the dragon weapon that gives 8% attack and 8% hit points. He was running uh, Helmet, the Fury of Tear, and he was running the Overlord's badge instead. So you can see three pieces of gear have changed on him, but overall his utility is still the same as a tank to survive hits, and the Blood Pact will provide that immunity against Sword Soul. Next up is Deedlet. And Deedlet, I've been changing back and forth. Sometimes I've been using her in infantry class, sometimes I've been using her in the mage class. Depending on what she's running, she may use unicorns or wizards, depending on the map as well. And right now, being in infantry class, she has the Gift of Eternal Life, along with a Giant's Resolve, Fury of Tear, and Star Earring. When in mage class, this is replaced with, um, I think, a, a Red Moon or Blue Moon. And then the Fury of Tear gets replaced with a Tenyo's Headdress. I mean, the armor, I think, becomes a Tenyo's Robe, right? So she has more hit points, but the accessory stays the same. Actually, let me just change her back to bringing unicorns. Okay, good. Juggler! My juggler needs no real introduction. It's a Thorns Enchanted Juggler as opposed to Steel. I know a lot of people are running steel for the extra 10% damage reduction effect. My juggler gen ten generally tends to survive anyways though, and that's because of really really good enchants. The Oath of Justice has 116 hit points with 5% and 3% defense, for example. So you can say this is pretty much 7% hit points with 3% defense. The Last Rites has 10% defense, 12% hit points, and 4% attack. The juggler's Gift, exclusive, has 15% hit points with 6% defense and 10 magic defense. And then the Swords of Metal has 7% defense, 5% hit points, and 6% magic defense. So it's a decent increase of stats overall. Magic defense could be higher, but overall, Juggler seems to tank everything as is, so I haven't really enchanted her any further. Licorice. Licorice is an interesting state because she has a red moon. She has her ideal set, right? Tenyo's Robe, Tenyo's Headdress, and Holy Ring. Um, Licorice is actually very borderline in terms of surviving Ares' AoE. It really depends on what kind of gear you have on her and whether she has enough hit points and defense enchants to survive that hit. Um, I think my Licorice is very, very borderline. Like, if I can get a bit more hit points and defense, it would probably increase her survivability. But the only item I would consider re-rolling any further at this point is this one, because it gives 11%, while it gives 11% hit points and 5% defense, there is no int increase. Oh, and in terms of Lecterous Soldiers, once again, she rotates between Crystal Warlocks and Sorceresses, depending on whether I need to survive or potentially need to do some single target strikes. 
She does also have access to Leviathans if you need her to walk through water. But keep in mind if she's running sorcerers, then she can fly through water. So that is something to keep in mind. After Licorice is Listelle. And Listelle is just the usual Sorcerer's Medal, the George Feather Crown, Last Rites, and Oath of Justice. I have a Thorns Enchant on her. Um, if you want to maximize her hit points, you should probably run like 2 green plus 2 green for 20% hit point increase rather than just 10%. That is very much an option for her. Um, a maximum hit point Listelle though probably wants to be at 6 stars, and mine is currently at 5 stars. So it's just one of those things. Um, Overall, for PvP, I generally replace the seals with uh, Reaper's Touch instead, and I usually also run Gargoyles instead of Vampire Bats. They're, my Gargoyles are a little bit more leveled, so you can see that there's like a slight power difference when I run the Gargoyles. Not much needs to be said about Listelle since she is very, very generic. Next up is Gizaroth. So. Gizaroff is running full moon for maximum stat increase. That will benefit his constructs the most. Um, my Gizaroff though doesn't have the absolute max intelligence increase. There is like, let's say 16% on Deceptive Division Destruction, but there's only 3% here on the Tenyo's Robe, 3% here on the Tenyo's Headdress, and then only, you can say pretty much 7% on the Holy Ring. So in terms of maximum in terms of int increase, I am actually kind of lacking. You can say 16 plus 6 is 22. 22 plus 7 is 29% int increase as opposed to maximum 35% or whatever. So it is what it is. I mean, since I spend so many enchants on my tanks in general, all my other characters tend to struggle a bit in terms of their enchants as a result. Hobo is next and my hobo is currently at 5 stars, better than 6 stars. Right? One of those limitations of not being able to fully grind heroes up to 6 stars if I'm trying to expand my repertoire of heroes, for good or for ill. Um, I should probably look into making him 6 stars, but we'll see how that fits in. Uh, he currently has a gift eternal life in case he does single target strikes, Tenyo's robe, Tenyo's headdress, and then a Vidar's rose for being able to dispel buffs from enemies. Um, no complaints about him. Uh, I run him with double AoE in general and in double. Right. Soldier choice usually tends to be Crystal Warlocks as well because of survivability and there is the access to wizards for more damage output but overall I think Crystal Warlocks seems to be better for him. Reen is next, another 5 star hero as opposed to 6 stars, and Reen has his pretty much ideal set, which is Balance Blade for extra AoE range, uh, Aeolus' Battle Armor for survivability against range attacks, Fury of Tear for extra AoE damage, and a Source of Metal for that immunity to silence effect. Arian Rod is my next mythical character, and my Arian Rod is actually 6 stars, unlike Reen. Um, Arian Rod pretty much has her ideal set too, with a Scarlet Reaper, a Carbon Fiber Armor, a Fury of Tear, and Apex Boost for extra mobility. The one thing I wonder is if I should replace the Fury of Tear with a Carbon Fiber Helmet. That's the one adjustment that I am considering changing, but as it is, you know, it works for her for now. Ares is the next character up in my box, and Ares is running a full moon enchant at this time. Uh, to be fair, this one is a bit questionable. I prefer it because, what, as usual, it maximizes his stats, which leads to maximum gain from things like his talent and from doing f the fixed damage and so on. But I've heard some people say that Ares could be better off with, let's say, Breeze for extra mobility or whatnot. I mean, I guess that's kind of like a preference thing. Uh, you know, Breeze would give extra mobility, Magic would give extra AoE damage, I don't know. I just like the full moon. Um, there is also, I think, the choice of like what, Meteor or whatever for the 20% damage increase, but in any case, full moon seems to be the most generic option, and I have him with, for example, 11% attack with 20 attack here. 
So that's, you can say, pretty much 14% attack. A bit over 14. 4% attack on the last rights. 4% on the King's Crown. So that's 22% so far. 22% plus this is the worst one, right? With 6 plus 10. So you can say 8%. So you can say uh, my Aries is at roughly 30% attack increase with an 11% crit chance rate. I really should re-roll this further to bring it up to 10%. But you can see just like every little item needs like 1% increase or whatever, which makes it a little bit iffy. Oh, sorry. Actually, this one has 10 attack. I actually missed that. So he is a little bit better than I thought, but still, the Judge's Talisman could very well be rerolled. Meh. You can see I don't really have very many characters that are actually at truly 35% attack increase. I tend to have a preference for balancing out the attack increase with a good amount of hit points, which is probably a mistake. Regardless, the next character up is currently Wilder. And Wilder, very much I need to change up his, the skills I bring on him, right? Uh, we saw, for example, a lot of usage of something like Regroup, Mass Heal, and Dispel, or Mass Heal, Dispel, Tactical Retreat, or whatever. Uh, it's just, we didn't see very many, use, very many um, applications of people bringing high stakes because it's very difficult to bring it. Frankly speaking, when you trigger it, the fact that he loses 99% of his hit points now means that anyone who does AoE and hits him will kill him off right there. So very difficult to trigger high stakes. And if, generally speaking, if you can trigger it, it might be like triggering on the very first turn. In which case, it only lasts three turns and then, it, and then you can't use it anymore. So it's one of those things where we're seeing less people bring high stakes in favor of his two cost and one cost skills something I have to consider as well, truthfully speaking. Uh, I think this was one of the big mistakes I made in during the playoff rounds, bringing the high stakes Wilder. Alright, moving down. Three characters left to talk about. Next up is Sophia. So, Sophia has a goddess left hand, her exclusive, Lost Light, a Tenyo's headdress, and a goddess tail. I actually have a Tree of Life enchant set on her, um, just, I don't think she needs the extra healing, and so I think her just providing extra stat buffs may work. Right? Um, it's also just, I had a lot of Tree of Life enchants available at that time, so I enchanted a set of healer gear with Tree of Life. So it is what it is. Um, yeah, I mean, int wise, she's pretty good with 466 plus 383, but right? we're looking at 15% here, a 3% increase here. Uh, no increase there, and then the goddess tier has the full 10%. So, and in general, you can say Sophia's survivability comes primarily from the Shrine Maidens. One improvement I could make to her gear set would be to replace the goddess tier with a source of metal. But of course, that requires having another source of metal, which I currently don't have. So, we'll see though. Like, basically, Having that immunity to silence for your healers is pretty clutch. If they get silenced, you've pretty much lost the battle right there, flat out. So that's why I am looking at replacing that source of, that goddess tier with a source of metal. But as usual, it just means I need to actually get one. Zerida is the 14th character in my box, and no real introduction needs to be made to her. Um, She's one. Of, I think she's one of the few characters that I truly have at near max attack. Right? For example, there is 15% here, there's 4% here, there is 5% here with another 4, and then the Judge's Talisman has 10% plus 8. So you can see that with this plus 8 there and plus 4 there, I'm actually a little bit over the 35% limit. Right? So because this 4% this means I only have 34% attack increase, and then you add, I don't know, add the 4, add the 8, given that um, I have 534 base attack, you can say close to 37% attack increase. So yeah, I mean, Zerida is my main assassin. <laughs> and very often, instead of running this Meteor, Shadow Raid, and Backstab, I have her run Killing Blow, Bloodthirster, and Slice Dried. I know people prefer, or I've been seeing people run Faction Bluff with Killing Blow and Bloodthirster. Um, I feel like it's a little bit too early to run that. 
like, or at least my Zerda has generally been able to kill things with Bloodthirster and Killing Blow, and then I can slice right back. That way I don't have to constantly have her activate the faction buff. You know, I am losing 10% damage that way, right, because she's not getting that extra bonus from her faction buff, but as I mentioned, I'm generally able to assassinate the targets I choose to hit with Zerda built that way. And it means I don't have to actually activate the faction buff as often, having as much downtime. Last but not least is Liana. And Liana is just running a full moon set to maximize her intelligence. Not sure if that was the greatest choice, but that is what she is running. Goddess tier. Uh, so, yeah, Goddess tier, Tenyo's robe, Tenyo's. Sorry, Witch's Reminiscence and a teddy bear so that when she brings gospel, it lasts three turns rather than two. Um, skills combo is for me is usually act again, gospel, and then heal. Sometimes I may bring prayer, sometimes I may bring summon sky archer, but the most common combo is heal, act again, and gospel. She's running this weird combo of act again, windblade, and meditation because I use her to auto battle my regular arena but yeah that's just a spe uh, special exception i suppose in apex arena i would never run this skill combo she is also kept alive by shrine maidens in general but because she is running the teddy bear she is actually vulnerable to assassination because things like backstab would break shrine maidens and make her easy to kill Nonetheless, with proper positioning, you can avoid having her get assassinated, generally speaking, and so it works pretty well. The only question I have for my Liana is generally whether I run Witch's Reminiscence or run a Tenyo's headdress on her, and I think it kind of depends. Right? Um, you know, at the very least, the Witch's Reminiscence can, does still have some use because it can provide that immunity to heal reversal, as well as immunity to effects that stop you from acting again. And those are my Apex 15 characters at this time. I'll talk about the backup characters in another video. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you found this one useful. Nitro out.